This video has been inspired because I've recently watched two YouTube videos. Um, the first is an interview that has just come out with Roger Penrose discussing his views on AI and pure maths. And uh, essentially he says, people have lost the plot. I mean, th he uses those words. <laughs> people have lost the plot and they're getting carried away. Um, the second video is, um, is interesting because normally when people um, say silly things about how pure mathematicians are going to be out of a job because of AI, it's coming from people who have never done research in pure maths and they don't really understand the creativity um, and this sort of je ne sais quoi that's required to do pure maths research. Um, but this video is from someone who is doing pure maths research. He's a final year pure maths researcher at Oxford, one of the best institutions in the world. And he's saying, essentially, one of the reasons why he's leaving academia is because he's worried that pure maths is going to be taken over by AI and there's going to be just huge cuts in funding. Now, if you look a little deeper and look at some of the reasons why he's actually leaving, he says this in another video, um, it becomes clear that his issues are more sort of with relationships with his supervisors. Um, and I think he's just thrown this... Uh, this AI thing on top, just to, you know, justify it a bit more. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly outline what Sir Roger Penrose says um, in his interview, because it goes on for half an hour, and uh, yeah, <laughs> the interviewer doesn't really speak the same language as Sir Roger, and it's, it's quite a hard watch, <laughs> because he just cuts him off all the time. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the, the main argument that I've not seen anyone say before as to why pure researchers in, in maths will never be out of a job. This argument justifies why you cannot basically fire people in pure maths research. For reasons, like, sure, if, <laughs> if they're, uh, they're going to be fired anyways, then you can fire them. But you cannot fire them because of AI, okay? So what Sir Roger says is that um, essentially AI is, the questions about what AI can do is the questions of what is computable, computability. And you can study logic, it's its own area of mass and computability. And very quickly you see that um, there is mathematics beyond computable mathematics. Okay, <laughs> so very quickly you see that there is mass beyond what AI can give you. Um, and he talks about Gödel's incompleteness theorem, essentially saying if you have things you believe are true and you give rules which allow you to prove other things, then um, there are things which you cannot prove by these rules. And essentially understanding why these rules are true the, the, the simple understanding of why these rules are true allows you to prove things that you cannot prove with just these rules. Meaning, computers cannot understand why the rules are true, and so they cannot prove these things. This is what Sir Roger says. Um, and it concerns me that <laughs> it's the study of logic and computability is really a small time investment to get to where you need to show that AI is insufficient, but no one's doing it. <laughs> like, no one making these arguments is doing it. So I encourage, if you're thinking about the limitations of AI and AI is going to take over pure mass, well, study logic and computability. Okay, but the argument I want to make that I have not heard anybody talk about is Suppose we have our AI systems and everything that we have now, but take it to a, take any point in history and let it loose on all the current mathematics at that point in history, and then ask, where would maths be now if it was just that? And think about it for a bit. It's, uh, it's an interesting question, and I've not heard it asked before, but I think... Take Gower theory, for example. This book here is excellent. It gives a historical perspective of Gower theory, how it came about, 
um, there's a full review by Daniel Rubin, essentially saying there's a huge problem with educating, with how modern algebra is, is taught to students. Um, and the problem is that you, there's no, there's no sense of why we're even talking about this, how it came about. And it's because of Galois theory, essentially, the concept of a group was introduced and studied and fields and so on. And this underpins all of modern number theory. So put yourself in the shoes of every Scalois and his colleagues around the time. And you're trying to solve, you're trying to study solutions of equations um, and study their structure. Um, so what this means is that you do not yet have general field field theory. You don't even really have the concept of a group. Okay, you basically don't have the concept of a group. There's some vague notions floating around at the time that it might be important, but exactly what was important and um, why we should study groups came about because of Gower theory. Um, but if you're interested in that, read this book. This gives a great account of why this stuff came about. So. You don't have any of this stuff. Let your AI system loose. Even if you give it guidance as to what questions you want to ask, like solubility by radicals. You know, I, I think a big problem with AI is that it has no nose, right? It doesn't have a nose to follow. It doesn't know what questions to ask. But that's sort of tangent to the key point I'm trying to make, which is convince me, <laughs> try and convince me that it will develop this abstract theory of fields, um, groups, solubility, um, and we'll come up with the proof that the quintic is insoluble by radicals, or anything which is analogous, right? Like it might look slightly different. Absolutely no chance. Try and convince me. <laughs> um, but the key point is that this underpins all of modern number theory. So if you did not have researchers working on this, then we would not have all of modern maths. Sure, you might say this example is a bit crude, but it highlights the key point I'm trying to make. Put yourself at any point in time in history and run these AI systems and see the deficit of what you will have lost, right? Maybe someone should simulate, simulate this. Maybe that's a good idea, actually. Um, I think that's a really good idea. Someone should sort of um, create a system which has all the rule, all the mass at a given point and then simulate what it creates. I think it will be shocking. Um, and it's coming back to what Sir Roger said, which is that fundamentally there's some, some consciousness and understanding of why things are true that allows you to prove things beyond computable mathematics. This, this sort of creativity, je ne sais quoi, whatever you want to call it, and if you've had any experience in pure maths, you will have read proofs and looked at the proof and have been like, where has that come from? <laughs> I have no idea. I would never have thought of that. Like, unbelievable creativity. Um, this is just not, you just can't replicate this with a computer. I've linked the interview with Sir Roger Penrose and the other video I was talking about. They'll be in the description. Um, essentially, to summarise, my key argument, which no one has made, is that you cannot justify getting rid of pure mass researchers because of AI advancements, solely because of AI advancements, because you go back to any point in history and let these AI systems loose, there will be a huge deficit between what you will have now and what is actually in place because of these researchers. And this argument works because mass is an infinite chain. There's always, every time you solve a question, there's always 10 more questions. So there's no, re you might try and argue against my argument because, well, maybe s just the stage we're at in mass now is, n no, nonsense. It's an infinite chain. And it's because of people trying to solve interesting questions, following their nose, posing slightly unrelated questions, abstracting and developing theory, that something like the problem of solving quintic equations turns into some beautiful general theory of fields and extensions and now has led to some unbelievable research in modern number theory. You would have none of this. 
Look, I'm not saying that AI is not useful. Of course, it's very useful and the progress is really fast. But this is why people are getting a bit carried away, or to use Sir Roger's words, they've lost the plot <laughs> when it comes to pure mass research. I'm also not saying that something non-human will not be able to do pure mass research at the, at the abilities of humans. I'm just saying that AI will not do this. And it's interesting that Sir Roger admits that he can't say that something non-human might one day replace researchers, but it's not going to be AI. This is an interesting topic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and someone run the simulations I've been talking about. Almost like backtesting a financial model, okay? <laughs> Do it for maths. <laughs> Thanks.